Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I am your host, Kev Baker, and for the next two hours, I'm coming to you live from Smart City, Glasgow, right in the heartland of Scotland. And we're going all the way around the world, from America to Australia, thanks to Truth Frequency Radio Network, your number one network. We give you protection from deception and where silence is always taken as consent and that's why over 33 shows right here on the network are never silent there is something for everyone right here on tfr and today is a very special day the blood moon has risen ladies and gents the blood moon has risen in my time doing the kev baker show some of the most interesting and fun shows have come at this time of year when these occasions have landed on our doorstep and the occasion of the lunar eclipse. I can't think of not one, but two better guests to be joining us today. We have got the other Kevin, Nacy, he is here with us. And we also have our resident astrologist. Yes, indeed. She's into all things metaphysical. And I like to call her Scary Mary. Yes, that's right. We have got Mary Decina back in the house. And she is a star shaman, a psychic, a tarot reader, an astrologer, and a mystic. And if that wasn't enough, she was born on Halloween. And she did the first psychic call-in show in Tampa in the 1980s. You can visit her website. But right now, for the next two hours, she's here with me and Nacy. And we'll be opening up the phones in the second hour of the show, ladies and gentlemen. The number you need is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. So before I go to Mary, who wants to say a few words in opening today, let me go to my brother, Nese. You've been looking forward to getting a chance, an opportunity to talk with our sister Mary. And today I've worked my magic, Nacy. You're here, dude. And for the blood moon as well, man. How are you doing? I'm doing as fantastic as the universe will allow. It is such a delight in my darkness to have this lunacy gathering, possibly, of the super blood eclipsed moon and if i may uh placate to our guest today buju anin nese indigeni kaz anishinabwem minawa kevin richard shores indigeni kaz jaganashi mug makwan and dundame aki minawa gawa babi gani kog and dunjiba minawa moorhead minnesota nugum in day chimi which get you mana nugani kana and thank you for this opportunity to be here with you, Mary. I'm excited, and I'll just sit back and listen now. So, Mary, um, I know you want uh -huh. to say a few words in opening, and I, and I tell you, can't beat Nacy giving us his native tongue before we get going. How are you doing, Mary? Oh, my Lord, that those light rays and, and the, the, the ancient always and forever harmony of sound and intention for me of any of the indigenous the, the the royalty of my ability to to be with first nations people wherever in the world is i i, I have such rarefied respect for the original peoples of the land on this on our earth mother so thank you nay say for that because it's absolutely medicine in all of my chakras they were all all of my energy centers, front door, back door, were, were, it's like the Tibetan bell with that. You know, it was like the great bell chant with that. I could, I could, it just everything reverberated. And, and I know I have, when we have, sometimes we think, sometimes we feel, and sometimes we know. I know on this trifecta plus lunar event, this, this opening of a portal and a cycle, that we also have the third Ascended Master's Moon. It starts with around Easter Passover of the Christos, the Yeshua, 
the rise of the of the Christ moon near Passover Easter. That's always when when the moon is going to be full in the sign of the scales Libra. Then we move to the Visak Buddha moon um, it, around May, usually every year when the full moon rises in. Whoa. Nancy, are you still there? Okay, I'm going to try and phone Mary back. Oh, boy. Now, she told me she's been having problems with her line. Hopefully, we'll be able to get her back in now. Nancy, I think you're muted. There he is. Nancy, you still there? Yeah. You are? Yeah, I am still here. Okay. That was a, a little weird one, but the energies are what they are on the Kev Baker show. So ah, who's to know um, what's going to happen? Well, are you looking forward to speaking to Mary while I try and get in touch with her here? Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely going to be exciting on it. I always will strongly suggest to individuals that if you can find somebody to talk to that can help you find a path, what we call the Bimad, the Z-Way we had, if you can find those individuals, those special entities that... Hello, my bestowed. brother. Hey, oh. hey, there we go. Sorry, Nancy. Sorry. Nancy, you finish what you were saying, and then we'll hand back to Mary. Mary, it's great to have you back. Thank you. I was I was just saying that, you know, I, I humbly suggest that people, if you can find an entity that has been bestowed special abilities or have been able to fine-tune themselves into the greater scheme of things, if they can help you assist in finding positivity, then by all means, reach out. Because if you're getting stagnant, just like pond water, stagnant water isn't healthy. So keep that river flowing, and the moon definitely is going to affect our water. Oh, I like it. I like it. So, Mary, listen, um, we got rudely interrupted. Hopefully that will be the, the last of that peskiness. <laughs> um, we'll see, we'll see. But I'm going to hand it back to you because I know you also wanted to give a, is it the great invocation today? And we've lost Mary again. We've lost Mary again. Now, this is nothing I'm doing, folks. Nothing I'm doing. I, I wish it was. I'm going to have to give Mary the number to call in, I believe. Um, give me two seconds here, folks. So oh, this is going to be a good one. Nancy. And so again, <laughs> again, my friend, the the electricity, the electromagnetism of today's day, could it all just be spiraling downward or spiraling upwards, depending on the perspective? It'll be what it was, but could we possibly be that direction of change? How do we put the udder or the oar in the water and help guide us down the river of life? Is it our is it our duty or is it our our uh, uh, way or our path to to guide ourselves through this river of life, or do we just want to go willy nilly? you know, bouncing off the banks, you know, down the current, or are we going to have direction? You know, because when you can steer yourself in that canoe down the river, it's a lot easier to to manipulate. Not, not the, the douche waters. canoe. Not the douche canoe now, Nancy. Right. Not, the, not the douche canoe. We're not having any else today. So listen, what, what, what do the elders and what, do, what is it you think about? What, what comes to your mind any time we have one of these blood moons, Nancy? Well, if if we jump back a little bit in what science has said right now, the, the blood moon or the super moon is when the moon is in the orbital ellipsis of close approx, approximate, uh, uh, closer to the Earth, you know, is what gives it the appearance of the super moon. And then if you put into the atmospheric conditions that will cause the red tinting of the moon. A lot of indigenous people would say that it was considered an omen or it was used as a marker on the great cycle around the earth okay, and the okay, moon. Okay, now, now listen, we've got Mary on the wow. Skype call, and I think we've got you on the call board as well, Mary. Um, okay. I'll tell you what to do. 
Can you hear me on the call board or can you hear me on Skype? I hear you perfectly right now, but remember, I'm on a landline. Okay, that's okay. Let's just go for it. While you hear me, let us just go for it. Um, I'm going to hand it over to you for the, the invocation if we can get that this time. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, this is interesting because, like, like Naysay knows, this is the, the sun is in Gemini, which is communications. Mercury's getting ready to go into Gemini retrograde. It's at its power point, and this full moon is attempting to rebuke any uninvited influences and allow the truth to come forth. So it doesn't surprise me that we've gotten a couple of drops. doesn't surprise me. And, so and we, we're maybe usually the great good. Yeah, we're usually good. Our, usually the connection's really good. I know. Good we've never had it. Yeah, yeah, we've never had it. So here we go. We'll all focus on this. <laughs> From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Amen. Amen. Wow, that is quite powerful, that. That's the first time I think I've heard that. I'll send it to you later. Yeah, I'll send it to you later. It just kind of encompasses a lot of cross-cultural energies, you know, to be able to do that. And when I was trying to dial back in, thank you, Naysay, for describing the the perigee, the close proximity of the moon to Earth and the supermoon. And it's the only total lunar eclipse of 2021. And I want to give a little backdrop when we keep the celestial scheme of things simple. This, this blood total eclipse supermoon ties back to the last one that we had in January of 2019, and in uh, the astrological scheme of things, they form archways, archways of vision quest, or imagine that it's the knight in the medieval times and he's going out on a vision quest, or the pirate that boards the ship, or the navy you know, a person, or the coast guard person that says, okay, I'm going to board the ship, or the cowboy that gets on the horse and says, I'm going to go west and try to find gold. This is one of those epic moments where this bridge now forges ahead for all of us, for all of us, into May 15th of 2022, because that's going to be the next blood moon experience. So this is the closest to Earth full moon of 2021, and it mainly affects four signs in each of our star maps, in each of our little treasure maps. And so, of course, it also affects these four signs, whether it's your solar sign, which is, would be your birthday falling in one of these signs, or your rising or ascending sign, which would be east on the medicine wheel for you. It's the front door of your chart. So if you're a Gemini, happy birthday, number one, 2021. But if you're a Gemini and the polar opposite Sagittarius, which is what the full moon rose in early this morning on my time zone in the mountains here, the Sagittarius arrows let loose. And if you look at the story of Sagittarius, it's like the arrows are let loose, and wherever they land is the actual treasure map vision quest for us to go on to shore up and have an anchor of our philosophical and sacred soul beliefs. So the arrows of Sagittarius represent, because arrows take action and thoughts are things, how are your belief systems and your sacred spirituality how is that serving you right now? And we're moving from the web of lies into the web of light. These are orbits of light that are coming around us right now, wonderful golden halos of light. So if you're a Gemini, Sagittarius, or the other two mutable signs, Virgo, mutable earth, and Pisces, mutable water. The Interesting that Naysay referred to the waters and the, and the breezes and the winds of change because Gemini is the etheric, akashic, air element, literally the breath of the divine that we can breathe. So it's our mental realm, it's our thought world, it's our self-talk, and it's how we treat ourselves in thought and silent conversation and how we speak to divinity, how we allow divinity to be invited in. It needs to have an invitation, ladies and gentlemen. It does very well with an invitation. It's called Ask and You Shall Receive. 
All of this eclipse energy of the Gemini and Sagittarius, Kevin, is squaring off with Jupiter in Pisces. So Jupiter is happiest in Sagittarius, second happiest in Pisces. So this is such an opportunity for us to allow that upgrade to our system, our matrix system hard drive. This is a wonderful time that the malware is deleted. There are viruses that are being deleted, literally and, and mechanically. And I feel like that it's if we will just reach to the realms of sacred spirit of where we have origin and say, I allow the breezes and the orbits and the atmospheres of prosperity and discernment and glory and grace and compassion and to be a steward of kindness to now come forth to me and allow myself to be blessed, that's okay, and also the people because of that and involved with that that I can now bless, the four-leggeds, the send ones, the winged ones, and so forth. So this has to do with Taurus. The Taurus-Scorpio axis of last month was saying, Take a breath and get outside. Get away from the, the techno-sapien, if you will. Get away from the social media. Get outside and let our Earth Mother embrace you and hold you. Spring is here in the Northern Hemisphere. So before, or, I, before I get Nase's thoughts on this, what was going on energetically last week, if anything? And it wasn't just me, but people in Discord talking about losing their mojo. I was ready for hanging up my microphone. I'd lost patience yeah, there, with humanity. Was there something going on in the... The energies, maybe. There was. There was. Besides different cosmic blueprint things, um, we've been having – there's been a solar minimum. And now, if you will, the sun is waking up from a slumber time. And so we had the strongest coronal mass ejections, CMEs, and, and solar flares, which affect radio waves and broadcast and grids. And we can get sleepy or lose our sleep or get dizzy or get colds or sinus It's like we can all of a sudden have this instant feeling – of being drained or charged because there's all this energy that takes a couple of days to get to Earth. And that started amping up May 7th, and it got stronger around May 17th toward this time. So it's, it's really been a type of um, – we had the new moon on the 11th, and so, again, that's the sun and moon in the same sign. So what happened was we did that shift from Taurus the bull and the pastures of peace – into the very multitasking, very busy, whirling dervish sign of Gemini. And then we have these CMEs that are taking off. So there's a great resource wow, for this. Wow, did you just say whirling dervish? I did. We were talking about them on the show just last week. How weird. Well, I have to listen to that one because I'm all into that. That's so, bizarre. And I want Naysay's take on this. But there, what's happening is certain people have have come out psychologically a bit altered from the lockdown energies of 2020, as I told you earlier, about seven months ago, 2020, when you look at uh, an ophthalmologist saying, well, your vision is 2020, so you have perfect sight. I think energetically 2020 with the government's overreach of the world reminded us what not to get complacent about, what we had not been seeing clearly, and where we need to open our eyes to what's really, what really matters in our life with the people we love and, and those that love us and what really makes this life worthwhile that we're moving through rather than just societal norms or fashion norms or Hollywood or Bollywood or any kind of government mandate. So it's, it's like we moved into a different dimension, and now we're kind of looking back at that whole S show. We're kind of looking back at all of that going Wow, I'm, I've been altered. I've been changed. And so I find it interesting that they try to call this cancel culture the woke generation because, in my little humble opinion, they're not seeing it as it's meant to be. Yes, they hijacked that term many, many months ago. But let's bring in our own whirling dervish. Macy, <laughs> what do you have to say to that? Wow, that was a lot of stuff that Mary gave us there, dude. But what are you thinking, Macy? Well, you know, the Anishinaabe, our new year is the equinox in the spring. And as as you know, Kevin, and probably the audience, I'm kind of a little bit of a fanatic when it comes to the lunacy because I was yep. born under the moon sign. And this is the third full moon of the year. And we call it Ode Iminigesis. 
which means the strawberry picking moon. So right now at the full moon is when the majority of the strawberries should be ripening. And if you start calculating sunrise and sunset, you're going to find out that quite possibly within the next 13 days, the days are going to start getting shorter because of how the cycle is off when the Gregorian calendar was established. And I was really excited when Mary brought up the full moon of 2019 in January, because that was also a once in a blue moon that occurred there. And this is when I started talking to you, Kev, about how our lunar calendar month from new moon to new moon has changed from 28 days to 30 days or to be more specific 29.5 is what they're claiming now yes yes that's absolutely correct and then the tie back to this you'll find this interesting gentlemen the tie back to this particular eclipse series this nodal eclipse series began in may of 2020 and this particular eclipse also, this is the way astrology can be like a um, a map, a compass for you to be able to be a time traveler and look both back and know a little bit of an advantage about what this sparks for blossoming. This is a seed of light, and it's going to blossom. Lunar eclipses tend to blossom 87 to 90 days, approximately about three months. So three of those 29 and a half point days that he was talking about. And this one ties back. If you go back, nodal eclipses go about... 18.5 to 19 months, okay? So if we go back nine years ago, which would have been the switch from this being a full moon in Sagittarius and the sun being in Gemini, the switch of the nodes, so switching that around, would have occurred in spring of 2012. So if you look back first to April, May of 2012, here's where you start to get your themes that are beginning to be a vision quest, again, at a higher octave, at a higher angle of light. What was going on in my life? What did I need to let go of? Because a Sagittarius nodal event is about what is no longer serving you. It's okay to release it. It's okay to release trauma. It's okay to dive in deep and let the emotional waves come over you to finally upsurp it from your cellular embeddedment. You know, get it out of those cells. Let the atomic light happen. The other point was back when we went to 2002. So we know here in this country, in America, there was a big shift that happened in 9-11 of 2001. But those, we, we started looking at things and having del- different belief patterns. I think, I forget what Bush called it. Was it the Patriot Act, Patriot Act that started like spying on Americans more and started doing more of the, you know, big government kind of getting a little eyeball in on things? So talk about protection from deception. So back in the end of 20, 2001 into the spring of 2002 that's that's exactly the nodal point that we've got right now so i looked back at that and i'm like whoa if you look at it personally who left your life what you moved into what you stepped away from because that's what pisces the feet do they walk us in or walk us out of things and it's good to observe what walked out of your life what did you need to walk away from and what came into your life both in the spring of 2012 and in, when we got into the spring point of 2002, those were powerful vortices. Those were por- portal points of our heart chakras reverberating through the new vision quest. So I'd just like to leave that with the audience and maybe make a note on that as we proceed. And just give that a point of like, who did I hook up with? What was important in my life? What, did I, what work did I leave? What did I move into? What was I disgruntled with? And what did I know no longer served my higher good? That was a very special time for me because that's when I found out I was having my son. Yes, indeed. Um, just oh, thinking nice. back there. Yeah, and you know what's really funny as well? I listened to another channel. Um, his name's C.W. Chanter. I probably disagree with more things than I agree with them on. But he talks about something called the 20-year nostalgia loop. And it got me mm-hmm. thinking maybe just a couple of weeks ago, you know, tw- 20 years ago right now, well, yes, it was that, that big year, 2001, and boy, oh, boy, did the world change after that event. Yes. And then it smacked me look- right about the face because I've heard people describing what's been going on as a, 
a slow burning type uh, 2001 event. I need to be careful here for, for algorithms when we upload this. Right. But isn't it almost crazy how history, it doesn't repeat itself precisely, but it certainly has that 20 year echo to it, if you ask well, even, me. Even in astrology, the, the 20 year cycle is the Jupiter and Saturn coming together, which they did on December 21st, to Naysay's point, exactly six months ago. You know, hold they came that together. thought, hold that thought. Naysay, you've got somebody here to back up your lunar woo. I'm loving it. We'll be back on the other side. Don't go anywhere, folks. Well, this is a, a show worthy of any blood moon, ladies and gentlemen. It's our first blood moon in two years, and I've got not one but two guests to mark the occasion. We've got Nacy, and we've got the quite wonderful Scary Mary in the house. She's Mary Decina, and what we do every time Mary comes on, we do it to coincide with the full moon, and we open up the phone lines for all of you. So if you would like to call in and speak to Mary after the next break, the number you need is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. So let's dive right back into this. And Nacy, Mary was saying just before the break about how we had Jupiter and Saturn doing things back in the last cycle as well. And it's great, brother, because sometimes when we've talked about the lunar cycle, I felt bad because I don't really know too much about it. And it's great to have somebody here today that not only knows what she's talking about, but she gets what you're talking about as well, Nacy. So over to you, man. Well, you know, I, I like to call it now the cycles of the psychos, you know, <laughs> and nothing is more disruptive to a cycle than to add another cycle or to recognize another cycle in your cycle. And so according to the Gregorian cycle, you and I, Kev, we are both cancer babies. And I believe, Mary, you're uh, a scorpion. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Yes, and, water. And interesting enough, with the, the scorpion, at one point it was the eagle. Mm -hmm. And the eagle is the Akira. thunderbird of the Anishinaabe, the Benese. Yeah. And which is funny because if you hear the word Thunderbird is Benese and my name being Nese, well, yeah. actually, that's my nickname. It's not my full name because as I've shared with you, Kev, I don't give my full Anishinaabe name because it's our power. But when when we recognize the cycles, I think, feel, believe that we become intuitive to when we can predict what is coming around the bend when we're going down the river of life. And sometimes it's good to listen to ourselves because more times than not, our intuitiveness is dead on. And so when you were talking earlier about how some people were feeling a little out of sorts prior to this conversion of this moment, I believe what it is is some people are feeling that precipice and and, and more times than not, we tend to get caught up in fear instead of love. And that fear is a very powerful, just as, just as powerful as love is. You know, so when we get into that fear, if we get too caught up into it, then that can disrupt our normal cycle. So it's just recognizing and acknowledging the cycles we're on. And as I say, keep all appendages inside the ride while it's in motion. That's a great visual. You know, it's, it's <laughs> I love that. When Disney first opened up in in Orlando, when uh, everybody was excited about Space Mountain to go on that ride. And on it, a couple of its maiden tours, they had all these warnings just to what you said to your point, keep your arms and sit down, don't stand up because 
and you know humans being the sentient beings that think they know it all and are superior above other sentient beings on this planet sometimes they have to test the odds in a in a wrong way well they had two different tracks and they had maybe it was space mountain a space mountain b and they had to shut one down because a couple of teenagers thought they'd be funny and stand up in this like kind of um, monorail high speed type of thing that was going on back when when Disney World opened and it caused a fatal scenario and had to shut down Space Mountain but it was like I was thinking about what you were talking about about 2019 they say and that's when the then acting president Trump initiated the the decal and the logo for Space Force and so that Last blood moon, interestingly enough, was when the moon was at zero of the lion heart, the brave heart, the lion totem, and the sun was at zero Aquarius, which Saturn shifted into. And a lot of what was going on in the 2019 when Saturn was heading toward the space moment, you, you spoke about flowing along in the, in the river of life. Right now at this blood moon, there's a mystical term called the winking stars. And it's a type of nocturnal alignment meditation you can do. And you go out on your own yard, on your own deck, on your own porch, whatever you want to do. Look out a window if it's raining. If you can see a star or wait till you get that clear night, and the next three nights would be great. And go out and close your eyes when you know you're standing on your safe vortex. And just feel which way the river of stars want you to point your face or turn your body, just like a circle, just like you're slowly turning around, you know, the directions, east, south west, north, turn around until you feel the stop. You don't have to worry about the direction. And then open your eyes and look up. Is there a winking star that seems to be blue or red? Do you recognize the constellation? There's all kinds of free apps you can put on your phone. Not that you need to always take it out there with you, for God's sakes. But you can go back with your phone after you do the meditation, the the night ceremony, and hold your phone up and see exactly what was in the portrait over your head with the winking stars in the river of stars because the Inuit people say perhaps they're not stars at all, but our loved ones looking down upon us, winking at us, knowing that they're forever by our sides. So there's star totems. There's constellation totems, like you talked about Aquila, the eagle, the thunderbird. There's a lot of star totems that are going on all the time when you look at actual sky constellations versus Western astrology or Vedic astrology, like we have the constellation of Scorpius involved around this time of this of this Sagittarian Western astrology moonrise. So what's happening right now is it's saying to you in the star fields that are lit up with the winking stars Under this flower moon, strawberry picking moon, this is the tarot card of the temperance because this actual eclipse on Pacific Daylight Time began at 4.11. It was the shortest eclipse, like the main piece of the eclipse was over with by 4.26, so you're talking about 14 minutes. The 14th oracle card in the major triumphs of traditional tarot is Archangel Michael, which is temperance, one foot on top of the water just sliding underneath the effluvia of our earth mother's ability to be the flow of life rather than being dammed up, our liquids within our body being pulled and influenced by anything to do with the moon, especially you two being cancer, the ocean crab moon child. So what's happening now is grandmother moon is enhancing Anytime it does anything, it enhances people born in the sign of the crab, which was originally called the moon child because they're children of the moon. So grandmother moon favors, whether she's at new moon or quarter moon or or the sliver moon, she favors the sign of cancer, most of all, of all other 11 signs. Cancer is favored by the moon, and Leo the lion is favored by the sun, by our great star. So, so, this so when particular... I was in boot camp, I, when I was in boot camp, you're telling me that my drill instructor, my corporal, wasn't far wrong when he said, Baker, you're wired to the moon. He, it, he was exactly point on. He was actually on point. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Bang on. Bang. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because what happens is you think about the, the liquids of the body, whether you want to measure how things go to the brain or the heart or the magnetic fields. When we have this combination of these the moon at perigee and the blood moon and a total lunar eclipse and and it's an ascended master's moon and there's nothing else in the element of fire right now but this moon in Sagittarius. All the other elements are represented, but this full moon in in nothing else is in Sagittarius of prominence except this full moon. So it's like the arrow is leaving the bow. What are you aiming at? 
all of us, meaning all of us, what do we want to aim at? Because I will say this in, in, in absolute clarity and clairvoyant intention, the divine forces are closer than ever, and this is the whole energy of this moon are the winds of change. Eclipses enhance stillness. There's a stillness, whether it's night or day. And the stillness right now is saying, beloved, just go inside yourself. Have a, a deep, rich conversation. Even if you doze off and fall asleep after prayer or ceremony or hypnosis or meditation, allow yourself to go into the vortex of the heavenly and the earthly realms. Allow that to be the scales of justice that you're balancing right now, the heart and the feather in the scales of Anubis when they're weighing the soul and the, and the, the heart of the person in the life at the, in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. This is a time for us to look at that statement, to thine own self be true, to thine own self be true. And so the tools of astrology, the tools of the medicine wheel, the tools and the, and the beautiful prayers in native language and native tongue, sound healing right now is very important too because we are, we are now tuning forks until we get to the solar eclipse of June 10th. We're tuning forks. So how do you want to be tuned up? Be very aware and awake it's no accident who we're meeting up with, who we're talking with, who leaves our life, and who comes in our life. But it is, I feel, important that we discern and have a different direction with how we're addressing ourselves, how we're prioritizing spirit, and how we are beginning to celebrate and be more disciplined with our wellness. Absolutely. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> see, see, Nancy, there's not many people that shut me up, is there? But when Mary talks, I, I just mute up and, uh, and I say nothing. What, what, what do you make of that one, man? Well, I, I couldn't agree more because, you Thank know, you. it's these, these uh, individuals that have honed their talents, that have utilized the full spectrum of divination. You know, I absolutely believe that you, Kevin, are just as capable of tuning in just as everybody is but unfortunately yes. in today's society we are so bombarded with this outer stimulation that we don't take those special moments to reflect within ourselves because in my experience that's where all of the answers are i can find more answers reflecting within myself than i can going outside and i'm not and i'm not just diminishing the fact that we have a whole plethora of knowledge out there to gain, but when it comes to making personal choice, that answer is within us. Yes, yes, the universe, the universe, and, and walking in tandem and inviting great spirit, your archangels, your, your meant-to-be life force guides. You know, if, like, our life is a map, why wouldn't you invite in the totems and the teachers and, and the, the wisdom keepers that could help enhance your light to come on even brighter inside of you? Because you're right, and they say the ultimate, the ultimate discernment and decision is when it feels in alignment and right with soul first, spirit and soul first, then the mind, then the body. It's spirit, mind, body. And to, to add a little bit more on that, you know, allegedly we are over 80 percent water in our yep. in our body. Our water is supposed to have a salt equivalent to the ocean. And when we have that little bit of salt in our water, we increase the electromagnetic conductivity throughout our body. And right Perfect. now with what's going on in the world if we are not maintaining that hydration, it is causing a negative effect on our body. But then when we have that hydration, then the natural cycles that occur, like the moon, when it affects the tides and the ocean, it will also affect us. And to think, if we have that ability to increase our conductivity, then could it possibly also add that we could tap into that alleged 10% of our brain that we refuse to use or we Absolutely. are manipulated not to use? 
Absolutely. Whether you want to deal with pink salt, Himalayan, Pakistani pink salt, which has all the amino acids, if you want to add the Gaelic Celtic salt, if you want to change your salts around. When I made my my elderberry infusion today to celebrate the sunrise of this of this moonrise, I, I absolutely went for the salt. That's why even even you'll see in fairy tales and legends that you know the witches would always or people would protect themselves by doing a salt ring. You know, there's it's in and it's in a lot of different cultures and beliefs about the empowerment of salt of the earth, so to speak. So you're right. So maybe we're not just tuning forks being played by the divine uh, hands, but maybe it's also that we are antenna. And if we open ourselves up to be tuned in, turn that antenna dish toward toward the as above, so here below frequencies with our beloved elders and ancestors and the, the heavenly hierarchy, then what can happen is we're, we're really getting a holistic tune-up at this time. We're not just tuning forks or antenna, but to Naysay's point, to be able to allow and do some of the things that we can do with our God-gifted hands to actually take our hands and, and, and hydrate and put the salt in there, infuse it, and be respectful and a bit reverent to the fact that my spirit is operating in this vehicle of my earth suit while I walk this world for a while. So why don't I stop ever abusing my earth body, my earth chalice, my my cup, my elixir, why don't I bless the elements, and since the only thing that's fire is this moon, why don't I make some crystal water and some moon water, and why don't I go out under the moon the next couple of nights, and why don't I make my chosen health infusion to hydrate, add a little salt of your choice into it, so you physically see and physically feel with your own fingers that you put a little tush of that salt in there, that you actually have a little bit of that taste as it goes into your body, and then you're creating your own self, self-allowing self tonic to upgrade your vibrations. I mean, sometimes when we do the physical ritual and we actually participate in the ceremony, it's not the length of the ceremony. It's not the time you spend in meditation or prayer. It's how you really just let go and invite the frequencies in. Which I, which I will add, if you do such as things or attempting to tune in, you know, just like we have locks on our doors and we get insurance for our cars and whatnot, it's always best to do a little uh, uh, protection, Absolutely. create a little safety bubble, you know, because when you do open up these portals, they are not always one way. When you open up something, that means something can come in as well as going out. Thank you for reminding the audience of that. But yeah, yeah I, I'm so used to always doing the prayers of light and the encircling of grace that you're right. That needs to be mentioned to, to all the people that are listening and will listen to the replay. Always, always the sacred protections and respect. Absolutely. That's that's number one. That's number one. You invite in the light and, and you release anything that is uninvited or deleterious. Because a lot of people, they say, and Kevin, they're not aware that they've been holding on to those embedded uh, traumas, fractures, brokenness, and wounds that happened when they were little children. You know, and, the, and, and you know as well as I do, we've all talked to people that the perpetrators or the monsters in their life even pass on from this earth and they're still carrying that that heavy baggage of how that person degraded them or abused them or hurt them or rejected them, and they're still feeling like they deal with those points of abandonment or rejection or anger. So just because an earthly person that hurt you passes away, to Naysay's point, it's also good to, when those things come up, just to simply give thanks that it came up and just let it go on up to the next level of, of love's light. Let it go. Just op- like, like the bird going out of the cage, going, you're safe. Go ahead and go. We're in the tropics. You know? Or you, you help the animal back to health, and then, uh, as they do all the time, you release the bear back into nature. You release the fox back into nature that you helped, whatever it is. The animal totem comes. You feed it. You give it safety, and you let it go back and to where it wants to go on the Earth Mother. Same thing when we're inviting in paranormal, supernatural forces. You know, be very, don't just willy-nilly call in anything, or like Naysay said, don't just ignore the point of the shields of light and protection because that's number one with me. Yeah, it's, it's a navigational direction. You're right. You open a door and you can let anything in willy-nilly if you're not using discernment. You know, Mary, it's it's really easy for us to, you know, just to, to say to let it go, you know, uh, you know, actions speak louder than words. But what would you suggest 
for the listeners out there that are having some of those challenges of letting things go? Do you have any any special uh, metaphors or little practices that they could invoke or attain? Back to your point, the universe within us, you know, we're, we're time travelers, so whatever may have hurt us or maligned us in any aspect of our past of this walkabout, then what we can do is, is, is first look at the fact that someone's abnormal. To, to us, we could look at someone's abnormal in their past became their normal. So what we would look at is, wow, that was a freaky circus. For them, that became normal out of habit and out of parental controls, et cetera, et cetera. So you can first say, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to center myself back in alignment, back in alignment with the Almighty I am, with great spirit. I trust the great mystery. I trust, I invite in my sacred holy sources and forces to be my director on this journey, to, to help me to stay on the path of light and, and prosperous wellness. So first, to your point, you anchor yourself. You anchor yourself. You're you're boarding um, a ship of seeing. You're going on a on a. It's you, you know you you invite the compass to be your your reliance. You know you've got your anchor and you've got your compass. And sometimes if we just simply form the words, now we're going to have to feel things. I understand that they went in as as sharp sharp shards of emotional impact and, and maybe some poison darts sometimes, may say, of the impact of the effect of it. And so sometimes we don't like to release it because we locked it down or it became habit that when we want to go hide or when we don't want to deal with something or when we're busy enabling someone else, it's because we're, it, it's, a, it's familiar to us. It's, so first we have to look at is my familiar go-to zones or runaway zones Again, back to this Sagittarius moon of beliefs. Are my beliefs, is what I'm telling myself, is my current 2021 chosen philosophy of what I got from my culture, what I got from my parents, what I got from my grandparents, how I was affected by that, is that, let me take the best of that and not just all of that. And I think even working with Jungian archetypes, you know, if you can maybe start to see if you shape shifted into a certain creature, on earth, what would you see when you feel the pain? What would be the creature that you see yourself as? Are you a badger? Are you a hummingbird? Are you a caterpillar? Are you a lion? Are you an eagle, like you mentioned? So I feel like if we can start to do these metaphors, the shape shift or these archetypes, and actually, like in the movie Avatar, you know, like the, the blue woman that was in one world and the one gentleman that had become paralyzed in the, in the, I don't know what you'd call it, 3D world or the world that he was in, but we went over into her vortex when he went over into to the land of the of the blue beings over there in Avatar, James Cameron's Avatar, he wasn't paralyzed in that realm. So there are realms within our consciousness that we've never been paralyzed. And even if I was physically um, changed in this realm, you know, it's like people that have phantom limbs and things. They're never really crippled. They might have a lack of use of something because of an earth event or, or, or some kind of accident, but that doesn't mean your soul is crippled, your mind is crippled, your creativity is shut down. Oh, no, maybe we're just – maybe it's just a part of our our medicine walk and our karma that that the great I am maybe kind of put us on point to pause. And, you know, I had a whole year of that in 2012 when I got thrown off a horse and, and, you know, shattered my arm and had to have pins and titanium plates. And and my whole world stopped for that whole year. So there can be car accidents. There can be physical accidents that no matter what you thought you had planned for a year, yeah, fate changes it. But this vortex right now is one of those we may feel the rumblings and like emotional tornadoes and 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 uh, 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 psychological hurricanes that are trying to come up. And I really believe that if we will allow the director of our life theater, the director, to be Almighty I Am, you know, Great Spirit, you know, my connection with God and and all that is holy and sacred. If you'll just let go of your need to control it yourself with your ego and say, I invite in. All that is sacred and holy, I invite that in so I will be able to release what I need to release in sacred, easy, harmonious ways instead of the proverbial baseball bat over our head. So I think it starts with permission. Isn't isn't that always the challenge when it comes down to it? If we look at 
ourselves and then our creator or our God and yes. trying to find that balance between the two. Because at one perspective, here we are, silly humans, for lack of a better term, um, proclaiming that, you know, we no longer need God, you know, and then we get smacked right upside the head when we realize that there is some type of universal force that will definitely put us in our place. Because I love the expression, if you want to make the universe laugh, tell it your plans. And then on the <laughs> other spectrum, you have, you never plan to fail, you only fail to plan. So it's that Perfect. constant shimmying, shimmying to the left and shimmying to the right and trying to find that balance, whether that balance, like in my situation, be um, not being red enough to be native and not being white enough to be in the dominant society. So we have to constantly adjust our utter or our or or set yes. our sails yes. for that that balance. Well, and, and to your point with those great statements you just made, I say often to my clients, whether I'm doing their astrological treasure map and helping them with divine timing because it's just a tool. It's not something to believe in. I will say that for the rest of my days on this planet. You don't have to believe in astrology as, as a big truth teaching that gets into the cachet of your spirituality. But like a good talk therapist, like a good coach that teaches you how to play soccer, yeah, there are valuable teachings and tools in our life. Healing doesn't mean the damage never existed, but it means the damage no longer controls us. So it's about that shifting of the control. And for me, and having tested all those waters, they say, for me, can't be, on Halloween, can't be born on Halloween and not have that one go on, but for me, I acquiesced a long time ago to the Almighty Am and to the Creator's plan. And there is no mortal that I would bow to, but I will immediately change course in the direction of the great I Am and the Creator and Great Spirit, Holy Spirit. That absolutely is in charge of my life. Absolutely. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen Very special broadcast today I've got not one but two guests I have got Nacy and we've got Mary Decina But before I go anywhere I want to take this opportunity To remind people that tomorrow night We're going to have a very important broadcast indeed we're going to be talking about the Pentech UFO incident. This has got military involvement, it's got police, it's got men in black, and I've got one of the main witnesses, Kaz Clark, and one of the UFO researchers that has got his hands-on Freedom of Information request documents coming on to KBS tomorrow night because they want to stay as public as possible. Why? There seems to be an ongoing attempt to cover up what, for me, could be one of the most one of the most, let me re repeat that again, one of the most important UFO cases that's ever happened in my lifetime. So, join me for that tomorrow. And one last thing I want to remind people of is send the Wookiee, our good friend the Wookiee, some love right now. He's probably late tuning in to today's broadcast because he's been watching his beloved Manchester United. And unfortunately, they've just lost the UEFA Cup. So, listen, Wookiee. I'm sending you some positive vibes, my man. Positive vibes. And by the time you're finished listening to Nacy and Mary here, you're going to forget all about it, brother. So listen, Nacy, I'm going to come back to you first, right? We got rudely interrupted by the break, okay? So I'm going to give it back to you to pick up where we left off, bro. Well, the last point I, w I wanted to share about the moon is I utilize the phases of the moon as my marker on the cycle. If we think of a circle that I bring up a lot. So we have these two dominant markers of the moon cycle. We have the new moon and the full moon. And I utilize those for like saying, OK, it's the new moon. Today I'm going to start this ritual or this ceremony and try to have the discipline to continue on for an entire moon cycle and then this way not only do i do i stabilize my own discipline i can take those denotation of like well maybe i need to stop eating meat for a month or maybe i need to stop 
drinking alcohol or quit sugar or something that you recognize that may be hindering you forward on your your flow of life you know so so you know each of us can do our own discernment and say hey you know maybe this or that could change how do i bring about that change well you know journaling and writing down that hey this new moon this cycle starts or the full moon this cycle starts and as anishinaabe right now this full moon tells us we're supposed to start paying attention to when the summer solstice is coming because then we can predict what's going to be coming in the future because we know once the summer solstice hits we have three months to get ready you know for the next cycle which is going to be winter and you have to prepare to get through winter you know so it's it's really easy to recognize the cycles and attune to them or dial into them but like I was saying earlier, the overabundance of stimuli makes it a little bit difficult. Okay, so well, before, I, before you take it, I, Mary, let me remind the audience really quickly. Um, we've got the phone lines open, folks. So if you want to call in to speak to Mary and get a reading, um, you might have a question you want to ask her. I've still got to get my monthly tarot card pulled. I always look forward to that. But the number you <laughs> need if you want to call in is 213-233-3998. That's 213-3, or sorry, 213-233-3998. And with that said, we've actually got our first caller on the line. So Mary, um, I don't know where we were, but hold that thought wherever you want to pick it up after we go to area code 828. Welcome to the Kev Baker Show. It's nice to talk to you, and I am going to hand you over to Mary Decina. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello. Hi yeah. there. Hiya. Hi. Hello, this caller. Is Lisa. Talking to Dr. Mary. Hi, Lisa. Would you like me to pick a card, or do you have a question? Um, you can just pick a card. Number one, thank you for listening. Thank you for taking your time to support Kev and enjoying Naysay and myself and blessings on this very important Grandmother Moon. Okay, I feel you got the Six of Swords in traditional tarot, and the swords have a lot to do with the air signs, Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra. And so the Six has a lot to do with establishing, establishing some sense of security, within oneself. Now, the, the artistic imagery in this particular deck that I'm working with is like a Viking boat. The actual canoe-looking kind of a, of a, of a boat has like, it, it's probably a dragon. It kind of looks like a cross between a dragon and a horse, so maybe those are totems that are trying to speak to you. It's interesting that when we're talking about a nodal cycle like we're in, the north node is also known in Vedic astrology as the dragon's head and the work to be done. And the south node, which is what this full moon is rising on in Sagittarius, is known as the dragon's tail, what we need to let go of and, and that we're flying past. You know, the fire is up in the front part of the dragon's head. So this is a rite of passage, and the six of swords speak about that you're journeying away from pressure and tension and things that used to lock you up and, and create a repetitive type of stagnation, frustration, anger coming at you, anger coming from you. I feel like that you have been medicinally working on your fire. There's a fire of passion. There's a fire of integrity. There's a fire of our, is our anger destructive, self-destructive, destructive to others, or becoming constructive and it's helping us declutter. This is also a moon to declutter. So this is a wonderful moon to be giving your things that you know you're kind of done with over to someone else that could become their treasures. It's a great moon of blessing way and tithing to another. And the six, there's some kind of security that's being established within you being able to manage your own anger, your own passion, your own sensuality, sexuality, and temperament. And what's interesting is the tarot card for the 14 minutes of this eclipse is temperance, which is a fancy word for balance, which is attributed to the, the dual sign. So I feel like that 
The waters are very calm. You always look in your dreams or in tarot or oracle cards. What does the water look like? And, and interesting, we're on the, uh, Nase mentioned precipice. We're on the, the edge of coming into the sixth month of the year of June. And so the six of swords, here we are talking on, on May 26th, live with the, the blood moon, full moon, lunar eclipse. So the six is saying to you, you're navigating away from the same old, same old lockdown psychological patterns that, that somehow encapsulated you. You've broken out of that encapsulation of that cocoon. And now you're able in Gemini, sign of the air, the air that you wear in the atmosphere and the winds of change and breezes of enlightenment. Gemini is all about that. It's all about how is the air circulating in your life? How are you getting, did you find your voice? Did you speak your mind? And are you able to upgrade your conversational abilities? Words put into motion. Because emotions are energy that are set into motion. And, you know, you, you've heard country things like, damn, it's fighting words, you know, or say that again. Okay. So there's things that can trigger us, that can really trigger us with words. What did you say? Did you just say that to me? So there's things that can get our rooster, you know, uh, a rooster comb up. And there's things that people can say to us that absolutely melt us into the most precious, soft moment of emotional security that we've had maybe in a long time, if ever. So I'm, I'm still urging the audience, and it's strong with you, be very aware and deliberate about the way you're saying what you're saying, because I feel like that you can be that, you can, turn, you can be the turning point for someone in family and in your personal life. It's the way we break up with someone. It's the way that we leave the job. It's the way we, what we say when we're on the job. So it has a lot to do with Gemini is the power of words. It's Mercury. It's the power of the moving words. So I feel like there's something around you now that you're having an upgrade in, in how you're standing your ground and how you're using your words as effective medicine. That sounds actually pretty much on point. <laughs> I always love well, it I mean, how Mary leaves the callers, just lost for words. That in itself is a ringing <laughs> endearment, Mary. It really is. Lost for words. That's interesting because if they're lost for words, then they'll find new worlds of being able to speak softly. I mean, look at look at all those things. Lost for words. Speak softly, but carry a big stick. There's a lot of old cultural sayings around words, and you know when it, it's spelled in the old Gaelic, it's W Y R D S. So words, words. or war, or warding off something, a warding off spell, W-A-R-D-I-N-G, warding I always, off. I like, always talk about words being spelled out. They're literally spells. They are. Every little That's word. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So this, this particular moonrise being enhanced, Lisa, by being an eclipse, by being a blood moon, which we talked about in the first hour that ties back to January of 2019 and then flies all the way back to 2002 and spring of 2012 journal like naysay was saying journal what were the big life navigations in my life at the end of 2001 into the spring of 2002 and then go forward to april may of, t- of 2012 and look at that what were the game changers then because this moon is graduation from those times and it's a graduation from this, from the seeds of then, but our next, our pilgrimage takes us to May 15th of 2022, which is the next blood moon. And that one is going to be, like this one was visible in the West, the blood moon of 2022 is going to be visible on the eastern seaboard. So if you're living in that, in the eastern part of the world, that's going to be highlighted in 2022. This solar eclipse coming up. On June 10th, in the dual sign of Gemini, enhances Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini in a very positive, like, rocket ship launch kind of a way. So to Nase's point of moon phases, the full moon shows us where the darkness is eclipsing our efforts and our intentions. Two weeks from now is a huge portal of light because it's going to be a solar eclipse in Gemini over June 9th, 10th, 11th, right around in there. So to his point, journal and plan for then. That's the next seeds of change. Now, Nisi, any quick comments for the caller at all? Yeah, um, Lisa, could, could you tell me what your feelings or thoughts when I ask you about traveling or the blues 
either the color blue or like the blues feeling feeling down? Um, traveling, I have actually been traveling a little bit. Um, not real far, you know, to the beach and back, and you know, Alabama and back from North Carolina, and um. I just I asked that because I, I asked that because sometimes the the six of swords also refers to like traveling, like something and traveling, you know, you can look at the full spectrum of traveling, whether it's, you know, low changing your physical location or spiritual, mental or yep. emotional traveling. Journey. So, yep. But yeah, that's what I I keep getting something about the blues or the color blue or like being down in the dumps, kind of like the blues, like rainy. I have not been down but, in the dumps. Good, um, good. That's all I like to hear. I have moved. <laughs> I have moved. Um, and my new kitchen is blue. Mm-hmm. Blue is not really my color. <laughs> you see? So, so you walk you walk you into go. blue. Yeah, you walk into, into a new a lot of blue. Okay. So he's blue. So that could be even though it's not your normal color, remember the Sagittarius moon has to do with new ways of believing and seeing. So blue is speaking to you uh-huh. because Naysay did not know about that. You moved and you walked into the area of nurturing and feeding and washing our hands and preparing meals for self and others. So it's a vortex. It's a Cancerian vortex that where we get fed and where we feed. And that energy, as you walked into that place, you didn't paint those walls, but you walked into that place. And so you walked into a place that you moved that has blue in the center of how we nurture and feed ourselves. Wow, wow. Now Very listen. True. Well, I'm going to have to move on because our phone lines are they're actually thank you for off, calling. off the list. So, Lisa, thank you very much for calling in. I hope we hear from you again. And um, please call next time Lisa's Always. on. Uh, not Lisa. So, see, I'm getting confused. Always. Too many names now. It's Mary, see? Scary Mary. Scary Mary. Scary Mary. So, thank you, Lisa. Now, we're going to move on to our next caller, which is area code 520. And I think this is from all the way over there in Arizona. Welcome to the show. And you're talking with Kev Nacy and most importantly, Mary Decina. Hi, this is Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Nice to speak Hello. to you, Mary. All yours. Hey. Jenny, thank Hi, you Mary. for How your... You thank you, honey. Really good. I love this moon. Thank you for in, your investment of interest <laughs> and your commitment to call in to the energies of Kev and Naysay and I. It's no accident with this moon who's getting through the phone lines, how the seeds of whatever we feel to say to you are going to bloom big in your life. And and I know I can speak for all three of us on this, and we only want the the resplendent light to ease all of that for you in in the most wonderful of ways. So do you want a card, or do you want me to just answer a question? or? Well, it, it, it's going to be up to you, uh, probably. Um, it's about my grandfather. I never met him. He was not a nice man in life, but he was a physicist, and he dealt with the whole secret, uh, the uh, m- remote viewing stuff back in the seventies. Oh. Mm-hmm. And and he developed some uh, some stuff. He's he's like a mad scientist uh, with uh, thought transfer. And I know Nick Baggage. He's in Alaska. He's the fellow that deals with harp. Harp, harp. Yeah, yep. he he knew my grandfather, and I tried to reach wow. out to Nick, but I've not heard back from him. And um, but my grandfather passed away, and he's been hanging around. And I know he feels kind of bad of what he did in life to my grandmother Correct. and my mom and all that. But he's I think Correct. he's trying to tell me and my nephew something as in that field because. When I spoke to him one time on the phone in eighth grade back in the 80s, and he hooked me up to a machine, and then the next day there were like men in black type of people following me and my sister in this little town in Louisiana, and I, I was kind of wise to it, but I think they're still hanging around the government or something. It's in my paranoia. I can understand. I can no. I can understand that. Well, you'd be paranoid to people that don't understand. But I know Naysay knows it from his cultures. Kev knows it from his backgrounds. I can tell you that I understand the entire concept because my dad was Oak Ridge, 
secret government there, and then, and then we moved because of NASA. So I get it. I get it. He knew about HARP. He knew about lots of things. I get it. You know, and the and the and the different. I mean, he talked freely about weather manipulation my whole life because he was the scientist, yeah. energy, engineering type of person. So here's what you want to do. To Naysay's point, you want to go into your protection and into your spirit and simply just whisper out loud in your own vortex of comfort where you feel safe, either out in nature or in your own home, and say, everything is released and forgiven from our earth walk. I get it. I, you just had you had your personality. I had my personality. Didn't like what you did to mom and grandma. That's your stuff, not mine. Just want you to know that, yep, I did witness it. Yep, I didn't like it, but I'm not holding on to it, and I'm releasing that with this full moon. Now, if there are important soul rich messages that you wish to convey to me in non vampirical, non invasive ways because I'm the director of shielding my energy. I allow a very serene dream or meditation that I will bring back with enough memory and enough cognition that I will have a pad of paper respectfully by my bed when I either meditate or do ceremony or dream, and I will be able to receive that in the in-between worlds and bring that back with blessing. So as long as we have a meeting of the heart, the soul, and the minds, that I will receive the messages. But if my part, I don't want you to be earthbound. So I forgive and I release any of that emotional witnessing that I did of you choosing to act out in aberrant ways. I release that. I don't need that in my aura, my energy fields anyway, so be gone. You have no power here. Now, having said that, the card that you've got is the Ace of Rods. Aces are infused with the hand of divine, the hand of spirit. The Ace of Rods is also known as the Ace of Wands. That's the fire element. So I see the angels, for the most part, as having the fire of spirituality, that phoenix, that transformational type of fire, the lightning bolts of enlightenment. And I feel like that there are some um, supernatural divine grace. You want to keep that energy in the portal and the vortex of divinity. So you allow the clouds of glory or you allow the the uh, agents of light to bring you forth in the most harmonious ways the main message that's meant to be. But because it's also a paranormal type of thing, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin Naysay, too. Okay, Nate, thank Nate. you. Thank wow. you. That's very helpful. Naysay, I'm going to defer to you, brother. What are you picking up on here, Naysay? Um, uh, another one of Ace of... Uh, Ace of Wands or Rods also uh, deals with like your core and your fire. And uh, my question is, does 55 mean something to you? Um, the minute you said it, it felt something, but I don't know exactly what it means, but it felt like something. I can meditate well, on that. I, I I get 55, and when I think of 55, I think of the pentacle. And the pentacle is used in ritual where sometimes in its denotion is when it's upside down, it's negative, And mm -hmm. when it's upside right, it's positive. So something about the, the – I'm getting like trying to find the balance with what occurred with your grandfather because mm. not, not – not to diminish him being negative, but when you think of people that are really intellectually caught up into science, sometimes they get really caught in linear patterns, and so they're very logical, and so they they don't find themselves in emotions, especially if they had a very emotional upbringing. When they get super logical, they try not to go back to emotions because they thought it you know, you know, like some people, when they cry, they'll wipe their tears off with like a, a fierceness, like, how dare I cry? And yeah. some people that get right. very logic get caught up in that emotion, you know. So my my feeling I'm getting is that um, possibly that your grandfather and because of blood lineage, we have that memory of DNA that yep. he maybe trying to awaken something that's within your core and trying to ignite that fire within, you know, and trying to utilize it to find mm -hmm. balance, if that helps. Naysay, 
Naysay, isn't there a saying, I don't know what it means, but I know I've heard the saying, double nickels or double double nickels or something like that. Isn't there some kind, I don't know if it's a gambling term or whatever it is, but there's something about, oh, double nickels. And I and and five is that when you've got double fives, Naysay, isn't always in numerology, five is the agent of change. So from chaos, change, from crisis. You know, elevation in consciousness. So, you know, and you maybe look at your address, look at your phone number, look at your area code, look at how that number starts to show up in your life that he saw. Well, I do. I am finding nickels quite a bit. You know, you've heard the saying pennies, pennies from heaven. I know what that means. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I do. I do find nickels quite a bit. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, I don't know what it. you I'm maybe looked that up. Look the... Well, now listen, we're, we're, I'm going to have to yeah. kind of wrap this call okay. up. So, Mary, Thank any you, last, Kev. any last. Thoughts for the caller here. Just try to find out what double nickels mean because I think Naysay's on to something with that dual five. No, very good. Affirmative, I will. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling and please phone in again. I'd love to talk to you some more. Um, Wow, we've got another couple of callers on the line and I ask you all to wait until after the break because I don't want to go to anyone just yet because then we'll have to go away to the break. So to area code 636. Area code 801, area code 256, please stay on the line, um, and we will get to you after the break. Now, Mary, we've got three minutes, so could you do me the honours and pull me a tarot Absolutely. card? Absolutely. I'll pull a circular oracle card, and I'll pull you a tarot. I will. Absolutely. Let me swirl these around. The, the deck that I'm working with for you, Kevin, is called the Hanson Roberts Tarot got a bit of a renaissance medieval spin to it okay one of the ones that i got is the seven of diamonds or the seven of pentacles seven to me is is a christ-based kind of higher consciousness like you know the the mysteries are involved in this the great mysteries great spirit you know the wonka tonka the you know great mysteries involved in how something is growing multiplying and like you know certain certain trees and certain flowers will eventually fruit or grow a nut and and something edible. So I feel like that something is growing. And um, on the card, you see the, the, the gardener, he's kind of like got his head on his, on his forearm on the shovel, like he's taken a momentary pause of, and there's, there's beautiful seven gleaming coins with the pentacles on it, you know, and it's getting ready to be sunset. So the bush is happy and it's got new blooms and everything, but he seems to be a little in the moment of like, I'm grateful for everything that's happened, but I wonder how long this next phase is going to be. So, so, so it's, it's, like like it's almost like I'm sitting there. I've done 1,500 episodes. I'm taking a little break, a little time out, and I'm looking at the world thinking, uh, you know, I, I don't know what quite comes next, you know. That sounds yeah, familiar. Yeah, that, that absolutely would fit. in your circular oracle card, and I'll send you pictures after the show, the circular oracle card that you have is a, is a ladder and it's up in the clouds. Now, interestingly, the clouds, instead of the normal artistic rendition of white or gray or silver, these clouds are like burgundy and blue, and it's a ladder climbing towards success. Wow. Hold on. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Final segment of today's very special broadcast, Under the Blood Moon. Yes, I've got Mary Decina and Nacy here with me live. We've got one segment to go, and don't you dare go anywhere after this broadcast. Oh, no, 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 because it doesn't stop here. TFR is home to 33 shows and hosts, and we've got noise in the background. It's... It's all jamming here today, but I can assure you somebody way more professional than me is going to be coming up after the break. We've got Lucky with the quantum <laughs> connections. She knows what she's doing, unlike me. I just kind of throw it all together at the last minute, but it was always going to be a no-brainer when I teamed up Mary Decina, our very own Scary Mary, and one half of Kevin Squared, Nacy. It was like a show that was made in heaven. And like I Trifecta. said, yeah, I've said to people sometimes, you know, a host needs to know just when to shut up. And that's what makes it a good show. And I have enjoyed listening to you guys tonight. And during the break, Mary sent me 
the tarot cards that she pulled for me. Um, I have felt like that dude with his head on his on his arm there on the shovel many times over the past couple of weeks. But we're back. The mojo is back. And then the other one, the ladder with the red and blue clouds. Very, very interesting indeed. Nacy, what do you make of these cards, man? Well, the one thing that I definitely wanted to share is, you know, with you and all of the shows, the 1,500 shows under your belt now, where you are like that, that gentleman who has worked his land and he's planted his harvest, and now you're at that point of where it's, you know, where the pondering of what is the harvest going to bring, you know, and then we have the ascended ladder into the heavens, you know, so it's, it's a heavenly bounty that could be bestowed upon you. And awesome. then when we see the seven with Kevin, it makes me think of the circle <laughs> with seven points, with one point being the center. Then you have the six pointed star, which some people will say is the Merkaba, which is yeah. like the balance yeah. of the pyramids. So, uh, well, the, the right seven, spot, when, I was a, when I was a young child, I used to think. Seven was a magical number because it rhymed with Kevin, and it has stuck with oh, me. That's I like awesome. I like three, I like seven, and and kind of weirdly, twenty one, which is three times seven. And I don't just like twenty one because it's the product of three and seven. No, it's just a number that I often come across. I've got the twenty four hour clock on on the PC as you do. Twenty one, twenty one. Get that one all the time, and we're in a twenty one mm. year. Okay, 2021, but it's 21 there at the you end. Go. Yeah, there we go. So listen, nobody wants to hear me, and we've got three callers yes, on the do. line. Oh, not tonight, Mary, not tonight. We want to hear from <laughs> our brilliant callers out there, because like you say, and I love when you, when you point this out, and I think people miss this all the time, every instant of every day, every meeting we have, every conversation we have, no matter how kind of throw away or unimportant that you might feel it is everything occurs at just the right time and you're in that right place when you need to be there and for people to call into this show it's very very humbling it really really is because you know people listening in from all around the world and then you take the time to call in I think there's something special about that and I agree with Mary if you get through then you're meant to be here so with that said we've got three calls to go we're going to give them about five minutes each, six yeah. minutes each maybe, so we can squeeze them all in. We're going to go to okay. area code 636. You're on with Kev, Nacy and Mary, and uh, welcome to the show. Hello. Hey there, welcome to the show. So Mary, I am going to let you do the honours. Okay, my dear, since we've got three calls, one of Kevin's number, in 2021, I'm going to ask you, do you want me to intuitively pick a card and just give you those insights, or do you have a specific question? I have too many questions, so please pick a card. <laughs> Sounds like you need to actually have a session. That, that's, what your, that's what your invitation of that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you got the two of pentacles. Boy, pentacles are dominating tonight, the earth element. <clears throat> it is an infinity symbol. It's the cosmic lemmascape. And so in this particular deck, the person is in a self-induced harmonious trance, speaking about our whirling dervishes. The sea behind them is choppy, and the boats are kind of like fighting the high tide of the waves. It's like there's a storm surge, what they talk about a storm surge, that happens before an actual cyclone, typhoon, hurricane happens. But... The part that represents you is levitating two golden coins with the, the star. And so what's happening is you're in a state of peace in the external world of turmoil. So I feel like something is achieving a type of what goes out, comes back around. There's a type of balance. Something's trying to find its sea legs and its balance. And a two always indicates to me there's more than the choice than there's more than just the choice you're thinking that you have to make, or there's more than one opportunity or option that you have to be able to consider. Don't be so fixed on just one way because I feel like there's going to be some more keys that unlock your options. Okay. Nacy, and any I want thought? you to. Oh, oh sorry, Mary, yeah. on you go. 
No, no, no. I was just going to say make sure that you work with that before Naysay speaks and call Kevin back maybe in two months or a couple. Let us know how that, what you unlocked and how you saw that there were multiple options. Okay. Naysay, what's your okay. thoughts on this one? Um, also with the uh, uh, two pentacles, sometimes uh, it could be like you're juggling a lot yep. of things, but you're doing it with a positive attitude. You're at least looking at it with a freshness that it could create something new. So uh, are you are you feeling like you're juggling a bunch of stuff right now? Uh, yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> of decisions to make yeah. uh, right away. Go within. Well, it, Go within. If, if I could just humbly suggest to make it simplex, you know, there's positive, neutral, and negative. And if you can use that simple discernment that is this positive for me, is it negative for me, or is it neutral? And if you can't make a decision and you have to take a lot of moments to try to come to a conclusion, then table it and come back to it at the next cycle, whether it be the next new moon or the next full moon. Okay. Wow, nice, yeah. nice. Thank you for Thank calling you, in today. Um, really, really means the world to all three of us here. Awesome. Mary, any last thoughts for this caller? I just get June 4th through the 6th. I don't, they just said make sure she gets that emphasis. June 4th through the 6th is the first wave. Okay, there you go. Well, okay. thank, thank you for All calling right, thank in. thank you. Well, thank you. Now we're going to move on then to our next caller. It's area code 801. Welcome to the show. I'm Kev. We've got Nacy here. And I'll put you on with Mary. Mary, over to you. Hello, caller. Hello? Yes. Do you have a question? Hi, Mary. This is Dalla. Yes, I have a question. Hi, Dalla. So, hello. Um, Okay, so my question is, uh, my fire, I've lost my joy, and I'm talking about my art room. I'm an artist. I have everything. I have a beautiful art room. The color in here bothered me. You talked about blue a little while ago with another color. There's some blue in here on one of the walls that's kind of always bothered me. Um, But anyway, I have everything in this beautiful art room. I work with fabric. I make dolls and bears and animals. And But I I come in here the last six months. You know, I lost my daughter. Then I lost my aunt. She was my mentor, my artistic, holistic mentor. I lost her. I lost my dog. All these things I've loved. I don't know um, if that's it, but it's like it's like there's there's not even a smoldering fire anymore. It's like I'm tired and I walk in here and it's kind of like um, I look around with lots of gratitude and just awestruck at everything I have. But there's no, I have no spark of joy. I have no fire. And if you were to see my, you know, what I've created and what I've done over the years, I got the point. I got the point. I got the point. They say, they say it's a fire. It's a fire eclipse. And she's saying she's lost her joy and lost her fire. I'm going to let you go first with this, with your indigenous wisdom, and then I'll finish. Well, the first thing that I would like for you to reflect on is, is you are the miraculous perfection of unique individualism. And I am fortunately blind with my two eyes. And so I had to learn how to utilize my third eye and see it. And you have the ability to look into a mirror and see this incredible um, uh, bombardment of electromagnetic rays where your oogly googlies can bring in that visual spectrum and your brain will calculate it and create it in your mind of that image. And then through that, you are able to create these incredible works of miraculousness because you are a miracle. And so if you can remember that miraculousness and that miraculousness that your aunt has, the miraculous that your your current pet has, we all have this energy, this fire, this field within us that can be found throughout the universe. 
and it's there. But sometimes we forget about that inner fire, that inner spark. And once you find that inner spark, as minimal as a giggle, it can start because soon a giggle can come into laughter and then a guffaw. And it's that it's that simple, you know, but we sometimes make it simplex to get that giggle, to get that spark ignited again. And just the fact that you're existing, that denotes the spark is there. Stella, we are okay. biochemical, multi-radiant rainbow spirit being so when you i'm not i'm not at all reducing any of the emotional impact of losing a pet losing your daughter losing your aunt so that's that's the foundation but they have completed what their mission is they slip their skin but they have a footprint in both worlds paw prints in both worlds and i feel like it's like my the, the, the relative i was closest to the most my younger brother left in that cycle we talked about in 2002 the the most cherished family member that i had you know the taurus cancer he left so my point is i know as much as you go through the earthly release, I know that he went first, so he could also be one of my totem guides here without making him earthbound. So you thank your daughter, and you thank your aunt, and you send spirit kisses to them and your pet, and you say, in honor of them, because of my walkabout with them, I will paint this room my color. When I go look at the color palettes at Lowe's or Home Depot or a big box store, go and put yourself in front of all those pieces of paper with those color chips and just say to myself, I'm going to pick three. I had three impacts leave my earth life. I'm going to go pick three different color palettes. I'm going to take them home, sleep with them under my pillowcase, walk with them in the woods with me, put them in my back shorts pocket, and I'm going to let the color tell me which is the one I'm supposed to paint in my art room. That is going to be the electromagnetic fire in visual form that lights up your room symbolically. Okay, thank you. I I, I just um, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of direction. Yes. Because I've been so lost, and I, I I can, yeah, and I'm aware, but I'm so lost of how do I find the spark? How what? Okay, I number one. Okay, spark? number one. Yes, Mary. Stop. Okay, stop affirming. Take in Naysay's words. Stop affirming in the present. I'm lost. I've lost my fire. We heard you. We really got it. We felt it. Remember when I talked about self-talk and our belief systems? Now say, I love my fire. I invite my fire. I'm on my path. I love the fire of my path in 2021. Words. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to make some affirmations. I'm going to write them down. Thank you. Yeah, this is the moon to let go of the talk that and the beliefs that do not serve our ultimate goal. Her ultimate goal is, I want my fire. I have my fire. I don't recognize my fire. You call it back. You start with the invocation. Come on, baby, oh, light focus. your I fire. That's you. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the obvious, That's go out and light a little fire in a kiva or in your little fire thing. Go light a fire and kiss it and throw frankincense in it and herbs and say thank you. I invite the beauty of fire and the purification of fire back into my life. I love you. I need to tell you that I love you. I love fire. Love it. Oh. That works for me. That works. I just I have goosebumps. My covering okay. my whole body right now. There you go. Yes. I tell you what. You know, if you yes. go back to the audience out there, go and listen to the voice of the caller when she called in, and now listen to the voice of the caller. You see, these are yep. the shows where we can make real yes, difference. Thank you. No, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, and um, because you for me okay. have been that. Not that I need an indication, but just hearing you, your voice, the change in it. The, 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 the kind of um, the joy you're taking from what Nacy and Mary had to tell you, um, that tells me that um, the Kev Baker show has changed one person's world today. And yep. I thank Mary for that. I thank Nacy, but I thank you yeah. for phoning in as well because you had to phone in to get yeah. Mary and Nacy to talk to you. And I suspect you might have lost sight of it, but there's no smoke without fire, and I can definitely smell a lot of smoke. Yeah. 
since you took the energy and the <laughs> yeah. effort. Yeah, you took the energy and the effort, and that's all you have to do is get back into the dance and the whirling and be the whirling dervish that spins around and says, I will make the energy. I will make the effort. I do invite the energy of the benevolence of fire. There we go. Enough said. Go do even your work. Go do your work. Alone. Even Absolutely. Yes, even if it's alone. Yep. Yeah. Be- better. Better if well, you do I'm it alone. About it. Just think of, yeah. think of yeah. it as a, 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 just a different you, phase you. of the thank journey. You, it's just a, That's right. a, a different phase of the yeah. journey, but still the journey. Absolutely. So listen, we're going to move on, but what a brilliant caller that was. That was day thank changing you. for that caller. And we're going to go to area code 256. You're on with Mary, and Mary, I'm going to let you take it. On you go. Okay. Hi, caller. Hi, Mary. This is Bruce in Alabama. How are you? Thank you, Bruce. Thank you for calling on this auspicious moonrise. Bruce, I got... Do you have a question, or do you want me to do the cards? Uh, A card card is okay. You got two that fell out at the same time. You got the Ace of Swords, again an ace, always a bright beginning. It's like the sword of Excalibur, and it has a lot to do with it takes the purity of intention of a person to be able to pull the sword out of the stone, the sword of the stone, So, and then it's uplifted. It's ascending, like the ladder that Kev got. It's ascending to the heavens. The sword is pointed toward the heavens, and it has a jeweled handle, and there's a laurel wreath of victory and overcoming with light rays coming down from the normal cloud colors of gray and white. The other card is the king of pentacles. This is an earth king, the earthy element, so Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn energy is beginning to come around you in some capacity. And I feel that in the Virgo season of this year, when we get to that third week of August into the first third three weeks of September, right before autumnal equinox, I feel like that you're going to be settled on what you want to invest in, both in the material world, what you want to liquidate, and what you want to spend more time doing, more time investing money into the crafting or how you spend your time, whether it's on a boat or, you know, taking short trips or being with certain people. I just feel the whole uh, latter part of August and the first three weeks of September is very rich. You're finding your own self-worth, and I believe that you're embracing what's truly valuable in your life, and that's where you're going to invest your time, your spirit, and your essence. But there's some new beginnings for you. The Ace of Swords can be great force in both love and letting go of that which kind of was at cross purposes in your past. Nay, say you go. Um, Bruce, is there something in your experience throughout your life that you found yourself exceptionally well at doing? Um, well, I'm retired military, so I, I did that pretty good for 20 years. I worked on helicopters. Wow. Well, th- th- that's what I'm picking up. Another one with the the King of Pentacles is mm-hmm. is utilizing something that you've experienced, that something that you fine tuned, you know, that's something that you're good at, and utilizing it for a reward. You know, so either rewarding yourself through that that learned uh, uh, um, task or skill that you have, you know, especially if it brings you joy, you know, keep it up. And and there's maybe a potential of of some kind of gain, whether it be yep. self gratitude or or even maybe financial in that skill that you've honed. And I feel love. I feel like that there's been a gap to do with your own uh, intimate sector of your life. And I feel like whatever's been missing or whatever was was lost, um, that's been grieved and mourned and respected. I know you respect a lot of things. People do when they've had the military experience. They learn about integrity and respect and how important those are as qualities of a knight. And I feel like that there's going to be the blooming of the heart and the romance, and I believe there's a paradise, there's a field of paradise coming in there that you probably wanted but were afraid to think that it could happen again or for you, and I feel like that's coming. I feel like that's a, that's the next part of your vision quest is being able to know that you can 
be held and embraced and you can give that love. You've got a lot of love in you, Bruce, and I feel like that you know that you're better being able to be that giver and to be someone that can protect and shield and and just enjoy life with that partner in love. Bruce, do you write poetry well, I, and you don't tell people about that? <laughs> no, no, no. I've never I've never been good at, at the English arts. <laughs> Um, well, well, about, well, listen, like, we're, we're going to have to move on, but Bruce, thank you for oh, calling in, man. Thank you, and um, from somebody that was in the Royal yeah. Signals, I take my hat off to anyone that, that, that's done time for their country, and I'd love to hear more about your helicopter stories one day. But thank you for calling in today, man. It means the world to the three of us, okay? Salute. Salute. Thank you for your service. Oh. Okay, we've got time for one more call, or we're going to go to area code 520. You're on with Mary Decina. Hello, caller. Hello? Yes, caller. You're there. Hello? There you are. There you are, caller. Do you have a question? Oh, hey, yay. Uh, bless, blessings of the hallowed light. Would you? Would you? It's meant to Hi, be. Everybody. It's meant. To... Okay, now we've got a bit of a we've got a bit of an echo. But Mercedes, it's great to hear from you. Um, have you got a question for Mary, or do you want her to pick a card? I want her to pick a card. There we go. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Great Spirit. Thank you, Beloved Holy Spirit. Thank you for this oracle message. Okay, I feel like that where a chair was empty, now I'm out of the tarot now, and I'm, I'm where there was an empty spot or where the chair needed to have something or someone, like a space or an area, um, there, there was something missing and you wanted to have some kind of love or some kind of companionship come in, be it human or animal, and I feel like that now the chair has a resident. You know how cats will crawl up in a chair or dogs will take a couch or a chair. And then I feel like there's something blooming with a new aspect of your work, your job, or your career. I feel like a bloom in that within five weeks. Wow. That's great. <laughs> okay, so I think the, the new horse, you know, we just got this amazing, incredible horse, and he did. he's filling in a space for the ah. other horse that – is sick, and um, so it's, it's a, really a worry. And um, God just said one night, "Wait, call this other other place, look for one more time." And, and so all of a sudden, here's this amazing horse to um, take the place Medicine of the horse. other horse when he. Yeah. yeah, and so and so then also Mary, um, I think that I think that's it. I think that you think it. You think that's it. I'll let Nay say speak, else, but, but I think it's both. I think it's both. Because you love the animals enough, number one, may I suggest that even though there may be a medical report, may I suggest that the horse has an energetic condition, but the horse is well. The horse, all is well with the soul of the horse. All is in divine plan. So if and when the horse chooses to slip its skin, it was simply the best time in the divine plan for the horse to slip. What you've done that is magnificent, you and your tribe, is that you – in thoughts that maybe the, that the passing would be soon, you had in your heart to go seek for a special earth angel to come forth for this horse in its, in its uh, prognosis of how it was wanting to be an overcomer. And it may succumb, it may overcome, but what you did is you brought in an actual physical totem of love for this horse that was going through a challenging issue. Never, ever say you're sick. Don't say the horse is sick. I understand the medical reports. I understand the challenges. I'm talking about the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost in words. Now, Nacy, you've got about one yes. minute, brother, to, to throw something at my Go, good Nacy. friend Mercedes. Go. Well, I just want to let you know, Mercedes, that I appreciate you. And right away, I get the feeling that there's individuals that are around you that you affect brilliantly, that you bring them joy. And I don't yep. think that you even recognize how much they they appreciate the delight you bring them. So thank wow. you for doing that. Medicine oh, horse. Thank you, Nathan. See, see. And um, I think the music and all the other thing is really, like, I think the second part, I know we don't look at a few seconds, but I think what she's meaning is the second part is uh, the work um, 
you know, I'm going to be doing some music with Bill Bean. And, I mean, how Wonderful. amazing is that? There you go. What a way to wrap Magic. up your show. We've got Mary Tassina. We've got Nancy. We've got Mercedes. Thank you, Mary. We, Thank you, Nancy. We are all under the blood moon, wherever you are. Make it TFR and Denny's touch that dial.